by the way, just uh, this is the uh, Northern Housing Conference, uh, the uh, challenge section number four. I was just told that yesterday when they got the web stats, there are about 400 people following us on the web. And so uh, we have more people on the web than we actually even have here. So if you're nervous at all about what's going on, just remember you're live on the web. And that'll just make you feel more comfortable, right, as you're going on. OK, well, we have a whole other set of contestants for our last challenge. Pretty simple challenge, but so we're, every time we have a simple challenge, we get more nitpicky about the details to make sure you do it right, because you'll have 20 minutes to try to do it. Just a quick recap as we've gone through the day. We had a deck basically built, a very small deck, and our real challenge was the staircasing up to the deck and the security rails, which we're doing now. The staircasing, you had to learn how to build your stringers and reinforce them. And all of that was with the objective that we could build stairs in a northern climate that would never break. You know, if we can get these so that the stairs are going to last longer than the deck, we're in good shape. Because normally what's happened, that staircase falls down or rips off or rots out early. And so that's why we've been trying to deal with a whole bunch of little details. And one of the details I come back to again is in-cut treatment. That's that smelly green stuff. By the way, you can buy it without much of an odor. They've finally done that. Uh, but it's generally known as smelly green stuff that you put on every place you cut a board. Well, the hotel didn't want green uh, carpets, so we're using water. But we do insist that every place where you have a cut, before you hide it, like up here at the top of this post, before you hide it, make sure we get some green of the stuff on there. So it's not green, it's water, and you go through the motions, but we'll be watching you to judge on that because it's such an important part of building a deck, even to the point of using an oil can with the same stuff in it to shoot through bolt holes. You drill a hole, you get it all wet on the inside, and you put the bolt in. It's funny little details, but it makes things last. And the rest of this has been made to be real sturdy. Now the question is, can we make this part of it strong enough that it'll stand up to a little bit of rock and roll up there on the deck or somebody really leaning or falling against it as opposed to something to fall off. Now, of course, it's not too serious if you're only a foot off the ground. But if you're up three, four feet, or particularly if you're on the second floor, this becomes a very serious thing. And a couple of serious things that we have to do about it, if you can slide your camera over that way so you can see between, you'll see that there's a certain spacing here between these rails. And there is a very specific code provision that there, no place can there be a space that is larger than four inches, which is the head of a small child. Okay, So you don't want the head to get in and get stuck and not be able to come back out. So that needs to be very careful that all over this stuff is spaced properly. So as you're setting it up, you're going to have to take a look. You'll find that one guide is that we've got one post right here flush between this and this piece, and then we go out evenly with four inch centers all the way across. Okay, Four inch centers make sure that the hole is less than four inches. It's just one way to do it. You can cheat it a little bit. So, what you're going to need to do, as you can see, the posts are all there. One, two, three, four, three posts. We're going to put a piece up the side here, and then we're going to put and there, all the pieces there. So there's a, a two by four comes up here, and it comes over here. Now they're pre-cut for you. So all you have to do is position them carefully, screw them in, and then these ones go on the top. But make sure we've got income treatment all over. Now, if you take a look at mine, you can see some split wood here. That's about the only split I seem to have. We went through a whole thing about split wood in the last session, and you might be interested in looking closely at these decks. In the very second session of the day, I didn't say a word, and people just screwed on most of the treads. And you'll see that almost every single tread that was put on at that point cracked. The screws caused it to crack to the edge. And then the last session that we did, they put on the last two treads, the ones with the notches in it. And if you take a look, there's only one crack in the whole set, and they didn't drill a pilot hole in that one screw. In all the rest of the screws, they drilled a pilot hole first, and then drove it in. So you have a small drill bit in your sets down there. You put the drill bit in. Any place where you're really going to be close to the edge, like this screw that went up like this, it's too close to the edge. You drill a little pilot hole first, then drive the screw in. And it seems like a waste of time. But if you really look at those treads, you'll see there's two treads on each one that is not cracked, and then all the rest of them are cracked. And that just means it ages much faster. Just drill that little hole, screw goes in, it doesn't push the wood away. It just holds the wood down. Okay, it's a little detail. 
but it helps make it work. Now we've got these on bolted on solid, so all you really have to do is put the upper stuff on. It's going to be fairly easy to go forward. Not a lot of complication. You've got 20 minutes to do it, which is more than enough time. So slow down. Slow down. No, and I say that because I'm going to ask the judges to get really nasty about details. Because you've got enough time. You don't have to rush. We're not even making you cut boards, OK? So you're just going to fit it in. And fit it in is the best fit that you can get. Now, there's a little difference we've got down here. It'll cause you a little bit of trouble. Half of the participants put this post all the way out in the front, and half of them put it back an inch in that notch. So half of them are not going to line up perfectly. Get it as best you can. That's not your fault. It was cut and designed for the post to be out front, but we only have two of them out front and three of them back in. OK, so you do what you can to line that up. And, and get it to work. Let's see, is there anything else that we need to cover? Well, I think what we should just talk about the general security of it is the whole idea here is that this is high enough so that my center of weight is still below the rail. So if I bump into it, I'm not likely to go over. You see, and that's what you're really you're trying to figure out. There's all kinds of specs in the building code of 36 inches if it's a real low deck and 48 inches if it's a high deck and everything. You're always better with a 48. Being high is that you come up here and you're not going to be spilling over the top side. So when you're setting up your own rail, a little bit higher than lower is a good idea. Okay. Now there's many, many ways to make this handrail. And this is just one of the many ways. So this is a way that makes a very large handrail. It's easy to hold on to. It's not much of a good grip for coming down the stairs. Okay. So it might actually be something with a vertical 2 by 4 might be better for coming down the stairs. However, on the top, and if this is a larger deck, the nice thing is that you can put a beer up here and it stays. OK? <laughs> so it can be important to have that. Well, let's say you can put a plate for your barbecue up there. OK. And, and it stays put. OK. Um, so this is a basic, just showing you a basic run on it. I think that's all we need to talk about. It. Let's get. Divide up into your teams, find yourself a booth, and we'll get you going. The one other thing I guess I should say, because I've been getting a lot of comments, particularly from the press, is we have a very strange hanger on the corner over here. If you look on the edges of all those decks, there's a strange hanger hanging down. That's because that's not the right piece of equipment for this deck size. And that's an important detail for you to think about. Before you start building your deck, make sure you have the hardware available, particularly if you're in a remote community and it, you just don't have it. So when we got going with this, we had an oversized one. We put it on anyway, but that would not be the proper holding power for this particular deck. There's other things we could have done. We didn't have enough for everybody, so we didn't bother. And this is what, if you didn't have the special one to work for that, you can get pieces like this that can go inside or outside, but you see this would come in and hold this piece back here where I can set it up and do it just perfectly and get in and grab that. So you may want to uh, be careful about making sure you have everything available before you start going. Or maybe if you can't get the right hardware, you just build the deck differently so that the hardware you have will work. We have two people down in the end. We got two people here. OK, now you should be locating your wood. There's not a lot to sift through, so it should be fairly easy to figure out where it goes. You got your screws, you got your drill guns and your drills. Um, and the only thing you might need is the pilot bit if you need to put some screws close to the edge that you think are going to crack. Uh, and you can always come up and take a look at mine up here if you're trying to figure something out. OK, don't get started yet, but get your stuff there. Now, you're going to have to lay it out. And if your pencil breaks or something, come bring it up. We'll sharpen them up here. We can deal with that. And just for my friend over there who doesn't like my pencil sharpener, I brought him a, uh, a knife that he can sharpen his pencil with. Uh, <laughs> Incut in -cut everything that needs to be. Incut everything that you supposedly just cut. So all the exposed ends get in-cut. All right. You got your stuff. You got your stuff. You guys are ready. OK. You got your stuff here. You got your stuff there. Is the timer ready? 
Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. You got 20 minutes. Go. Lots of time. Do it carefully. Do it right. Now that little end cut that they're doing on the top of those posts is one of the most important things you could do. Particularly when the post is flat, or it's not at an angle, because the water just sits there and soaks in. And that needs to be put on end cut, and you put it on, and you put it on, until it won't go in anymore. That, that's the one that's really important. And particularly since we're putting a piece of wood up here, sandwiches in, and doesn't let that water dry out. So you might think it protects it from the water. It does to some extent, but it holds the water in. And now we get to really starting. We can hear it. Are you working out the angles here? <laughs> Chris is our deck designer, and he's trying to figure out exactly how we work the angles for the post an inch too far back. Now that's the right sound over there. You just get it going all the way in. But you got to stop and not go through the wood. <laughs> that's the only problem with these new guns is they're powerful enough you can just drive the screw right through the other side. You got life easy because you put your post in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> you want to start it up? Go ahead. I'm just gonna. I'm setting up for a photo op here. <laughs> now let her drive a few. You got time. going to be done in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> now you've got to take turns with that gun. I, don't want, I want to see a ch change off here. Oh, no, no, you don't get away without doing it. OK. Oh, now that's good. I like that, because you're right close to the edge. So hard, is it? Just a shot. <laughs> That's good. That's good. See, that ratchet sound is what drives it. Put your, put your hand up here. Get right away from me because it went so fast. Push, push, push in. And then it doesn't run away from you. You gotta just stay in line. Yeah. Now you're gonna need your tape measure and your pencils to line out for all of the verticals. And if you're wondering where they go, go up and take a look at mine on the stage. Now, 
Best thing is to line your first one up here. Put the tag in the bottom. It'll look, put the tag in the bottom. It'll look better for the camera. <laughs> yeah, come in like that, and then just come right over here. Line that up, and then then you're going to have to go measuring. Make sure there's less than four inches. So what we usually do is four inch on center. Four inch on center means it's less than four inches in the middle. And you did a real, real nice little overlap there. See how that fits in nice? You did a really good job on that. Huh? On the ends of everything. On the ends? Like in between these two? Like where you can't, where you can't do it up here? <laughs> Okay, we've only we got 12 minutes left, so you got more than half the time still to go. Now you need to start doing some measuring and calculating how far you're going to put that. Yeah. And if you need to sharpen your pencil, I brought you a knife. Just because I you didn't like my other. <laughs> oh, this is this is a nice one. <laughs> You like that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can, I was gonna say you're a real carpenter, a finished carpenter. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Isn't that nice? Milwaukee. Yeah, you don't really need pilot holes when you're deep into the, you know, I got a lot of meat there, it's not going to split. When, it's when you get close to an end, that's like this one. See, that, that wants to split, but uh, when you're that far in, there's no way you can split that wood. Not with a little screw like that. See, if you take a look here, you see the split all there? Yep. And this one didn't split at all down here. Okay, you're up and going. Actually, you'll find a little secret. Yeah, if you actually, we found, yeah, if you actually line it up here, everything works better. We fought with that last night, trying to figure out what was the best way. So just line it up with that edge over there, and that's a good starting point. Then you got to measure them out. Um, you got your first one up there, good, that's good. No more than four inches opening. Never believe a square, because who says that they put that thing up straight? It has no level. No, it only is a square. So line it up with the post. Okay. okay. You're much better off lining it up with the post. Squares don't work in crooked houses. <laughs>
You've got nine and a half minutes left. <laughs> Trying to bend the stairway straight? <laughs> ah, okay. So it's giving you trouble? Okay, well, get it as close as you can. <laughs> That's real life. It's much better working with four by fours outside where they stay frozen. <laughs> So what you trying to figure out how far to go? What you really want to do is, is decide where your centers are going to be. So let's say we put it at four inches center. Well, you have four and a quarter center, which gives us two and a half, so we're plenty there. What did we do up here? Let me see what that looks too tight. What do we have here? Here I've got actually four inches in between. So I got a five and a quarter center. That one's got a five and a quarter center to center. They put a real four inches in between the, the boards because you're not going to have enough verticals if you put them that close. Yeah. There's no problem with them that close. It's just you don't have enough wood today. Yeah. So put four inches in the space. If you needed to fix this in the field, the real key is before you screw it down, take a handsaw and cut up here so it cuts both sides equally. Three or four cuts and it comes up and fits perfect. It's better in a miter saw. You just take a handsaw there and run it in the crack, move it up, run it in the crack, move it up. There's no more crack, screw it down. <laughs> pilot holes over there, because that's got enough meat. It's when you're close to the end that it's important. That's important. I'm not there in the middle of the board over there. Blum, blum. And they're rocking and rolling. Six minutes left. Hardest thing is getting your drill bit back. <laughs> You're gotten into this. Five and a half minutes. Okay, that's up. Let me help you with the first one of those. Give me... I'm going to put this one. Let's put the tag down just for the television. <laughs> and line it up like this. Okay. And just butt it up here. Mm -hmm. Line it up with that. One screw there, one screw there. Okay. Yeah, butt it right up to there. You see, it's a nice little overhang. That's beautiful because it just covers the edge. And you don't have to drill a pilot hole because you stay far enough away from the edge. Stay fairly low, but you don't want to run. Just notice you got a screw here. You don't want to hit that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't fix that. In. I got all the other ones finished? Yeah. Oh, you're out of sticks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Then you're gonna figure, you're gonna clean that up. Yeah, with hands up. Yeah, go ahead. Did, did you cut with the saw? Did you make a cut? Okay, just the thickness of the saw blades. That's gonna take several, but. No, no, don't even drag it in. Just slide it up, and we'll hold on to it. You cut. Uh, it looks like yeah, straight down. Okay. Now we'll you and I hang on. You and I hang on, and you cut. We're gonna see. This is how you do a perfect miter saw. Okay. Oh, 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 we're not doing a good job here. It's our fault. You go. Watch out for your fingers. Is it through? Okay. I always loved that when I learned it because I could do some really fancy woodworking. Imperfect, but it comes out perfect. <laughs> I have no idea what the angle is, but look at how that's closing up. Isn't that cool? It just closes right up. Now you ask yourself whether it's worth it. What's it taking us? Two minutes to do this? In two minutes, you make a perfect joint. And it really looks nice when you're done. And it took you an extra two minutes to do that. You got it through? That's pretty good. Yeah, it was, it was way off, and now he's almost dead on. I mean, if you really screwed it down tight and did one last one, you'd have a perfect job. Two and a half minutes. Do you have extra sticks here? You need, you need one or two. Okay, you ran out of sticks over there? Okay. Uh, I'm looking around. You, have extra, you got the right number of sticks? Should be eight uh, they're missing one. It's even got screws in it for you. <laughs> You got a minute and a half to go. This one's done. This one's getting close. Did you see what we did on the other side over there? Yep. Oh, you did a little bit of the same thing, huh? Bring it in. That's when you're a maniac. <laughs> Not the best knife for it, but. <laughs> All right, so you guys are done here? We've got 41 seconds left to go. You guys are done? And the ladies are going to fall right through the rails. <laughs> Keep going. You got 17 seconds. One more. Okay. We're down to the wire. You, you guys got it done over there? Okay. Six, five, four, three, two, one. It's over. <laughs> you almost got it. You got the top really nice. Really nice there. Okay. Now it's up to the judges. I don't know if you noticed while we were playing around over here. We did a special little one. These things didn't meet really well on the top, especially because the bottom post is like out of place, so the angles weren't cut perfectly. So as you see in this middle one here, we actually held the pieces in place with a big crack, a strange crack between it, 
held on tight, and just ran a handsaw through the joint. Well, it cuts off the same amount on both sides. And then we pushed it up and did it again. And it took two minutes to make a perfect joint out of something that was a lousy joint. And if I went back to a miter saw, it would take me forever to get the right angle because it was really a weird angle to make it fit. And so instead of knowing anything about angles, when you push two pieces together and got a bit of a wedge opening up, if you can hold everything tight or clamp it down, just run a handsaw through, then slide it tight together, run it again until the handsaw is perfectly straight so that next time I slide it up, there's no crack. And it is amazing how good a finished carpentry can do by cheating the angles like that. I hate tape measures and I hate measuring because you always have a chance of being a quarter inch off. You know, it's like the old story about the kitchen counter, you make a three quarter inch mistake, right? Because you measured the wrong way on the tape. Well, that's called a uh, new design. It, the kitchen counters, mom, are now all three quarters inch higher, you see, <laughs> or shorter. <laughs> Depending on which, kind, which way you made the error. What is surprising is how much strength these things actually add to the whole place, even though it's just one little screw. But the real strength is the 4 by 4s that are bolted in and this massive stuff on top. And then this is really basically just to keep things and kids from falling out. Again, an open design pretty much to make sure we can kick snow out pretty easily. And that was the thing we did earlier. For those of you that weren't here earlier, so we made one step, which was just regular. Another step, we actually put this piece in, which gives it more strength. But one thing I like about this design is in snow country, your snow kicks through. To put a full riser, it all blocks up, and you get a big block of ice there, and it's a lot of trouble cleaning off all the time. And so your step gets shorter and sh smaller and smaller. But by leaving that open in the bottom, I get the strength on the top side and in the bottom side. And that was done simply by we did it regular, then cut a notch for a two by four so it just sits in there and then put that one on. And now it means that I can actually clean this easily. I can keep kick the stuff through, but I've got better support. Now, short step like this, that's overkill. But if we were out to the limit of 28 inches, you start getting a bit of a spring when you put 200 pounds on it and bounce up and down. The other nice thing about it, it means the screws never wear. When, whenever you get flex in a deck, it works the screws. And if they're nails, they actually come up. If they're screws, they just get bigger and bigger holes. Because <laughs> the screws don't come up. You see the judges are out there measuring the holes, measuring clearances. These guys are worse than, than a uh, housing inspector. So you weren't fast, but you learned how to use a drill. Yes, very good, yes. This is one of the easiest ones to use because it's so small but powerful and with that ratcheting hammer effect with impact driver, it really drives screws amazingly easily. One of the little tricks if you're having trouble with it popping out all the time is to pull the trigger and let go. Pull it, go, pa, 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 pa. Because every time you let go, it sets itself back into the bottom of the screw because your problem is you're working out a little bit as it goes around if you're not quite straight and not quite pushing right. So if you have trouble with that, just try little impulses and it'll stay seated all the time. And the judge, this is time for the drum roll. The judges have decided. First of all, we would like to shout out for these two ladies who jumped in here. I didn't have a clue what they were doing and today Ron let, let, Let's give an applause for these two ladies who jumped in and filled in our booth. First time they ever touched an impact wrench or a drill, and they did a pretty good job. We'd like to thank all of you who are today, especially. Yeah, what, what, why don't you cuddle up to me and talk in my microphone, dear? We just want to thank all of the teams for participating today, especially the teams that participated multiple times. We really appreciate it. 
And the winner of our final challenge today is Garden River. Garden River, there he is. A nice set of Stanley screwdrivers. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's our challenge for this conference. I hope you learned something. That's my biggest, most important thing to me is that you actually walk away with some details. Some things will make better decks or better stairs the next time you build them in your community. And I hope that that does help you to do it. We don't know what we're going to do next year, but we'll figure out something else. We'll have a challenge like this every year. So uh, thank you very much for participating. And uh, it was wonderful being here to work with you.